Sarah Farouk, um, S-A-R-A-H, F-A-R-O-U-Q. I'm an organizer here in San Diego. I'm an organizer with the San Diego for Palestine Coalition. We're the coalition that put together this rally, um, amongst other organizations that are also here supporting Palestinian human rights. Right on. And um, what are your thoughts on the, the latest attendance for the, um, the rally last week, last Sunday? The visual a couple of days ago, yeah. and today's rally and protest. What are your thoughts on the the attendance and um, yeah. just just your thoughts in general? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, as you can see, as you probably saw in the coverage earlier, there were thousands of people that came here today, and thousands even more. Um, at earlier actions, the previous actions that we've had, this is the third protest, um, third rally that we are here today. Uh, we've had a vigil um, earlier this week that, that you know honors the martyrs and, and the, the Palestinian people that were lost, and not just lost, but murdered and killed um, in Gaza and in the hospital, 800 of them, and the thousands more that have been killed and murdered under Israeli military occupation. And so really what we are here today is to continue to amplify those asks and to continue to raise awareness that the genocide is not over, that the that we need a ceasefire immediately and the significance of this location particularly being the federal plaza is because we are trying to call on our federal elected officials to make sure that they are passing the resolution for ceasefire immediately uh, this is this is a resolution that demands and asks for us to stop the killing of Palestinians, which we are complicit in as Americans. Um, as some people might not know, but U.S. tax dollars go to funding of the Israeli military occupation. You know, billions of dollars each year go to that. And so we want to make sure that we are stopping that funding that is happening. And we want to make sure that we are calling on our elected officials, not just the federal ones, but also our local elected officials, to stop being silent and to speak up about what is happening because it's not an issue overseas. We see that our own community members here, Palestinian, Arab, Muslim Americans, all of them are being affected by this, whether they have family in Gaza or in the West Bank, or people that have just been dehumanized due to the media coverage and the lack of, of speaking from our public elected officials. And so we are trying to call on an immediate ceasefire. We are also here to call on our elected officials to speak up about the violence that, are, that is happening against Palestinians and to stop that violence and to also urge our local elected officials to speak up about this. We need them to be more outspoken. We need them to be, to be on the right side of history in this very moment right now. What do you think is it that prevents officials, local, state, and federal from doing the right thing, from um, even being connected to the, the Gaza, the Palestinian struggle? Why is it so? Why is it so easy for them to side or to say things um, in allegiance, it seems, with Israel? Because Israel has been the sister state, the the proxy state of, of the U.S. for decades now, and this isn't something that is new. It didn't start last week. This is an ongoing occupation from decades ago, from 75 years. And so, what stops them and what prevents them from siding on this is. The Zionist lobby, the millions, the billions of dollars that goes to fund Israel. And honestly, as you can probably have seen, the silencing of people that speak up about Palestine. And so we've seen that public elected officials being targeted for speaking up about Palestine. We're seeing leaders in the community being silenced for speaking up about Palestine. And that's what prevents them. It's the fear of being targeted. It's the fear of speaking up. But I think in this moment, more than any moment in history right now, in Palestine and here, it is, it is so significant it is so critical for us to speak up about this and sure there is that fear of being targeted of being surveilled of being silenced but i think that people in, in gaza want us to speak up more because they are being silenced the media is silencing them elected officials are silencing them so it is always easier to side with the oppressors but it is always harder to side with people that are oppressed and so that is what we are trying to do today we want to make sure that they hear us we want to make sure that they hear us and that, that we're able to. Over again, that part. Wait, which part? Um, 20 <laughs> seconds. Please. Sure. Um, let me see. It is harder for them to speak up about this because it is always easier to stand up at, with the, the oppressors. It has always been easy historically to do that. It is always easy. It is not costly. But more than anything in this moment, when Gazans themselves, and Palestinians in Gaza and in Palestine, are asking us to speak up because they themselves 
the media coverage, the elected officials have been silencing them, diligently silencing them and not letting them speak up and share their stories and share their struggles. Now more than anything, they're asking us to be their voice outside of the siege. But we are here demanding that elected officials amplify that voice and continue to stand up on the right side of justice. Do you have any advice for people who are you know, on the edge or, or close to, to you know, saying something publicly for the first time mm -hmm. yeah. in support of Palestine and Gaza? Yeah. yeah. I think it's not an issue that people need to be on the edge about. I mean, it's, it's quite simple, it's quite clear. I think over the last, uh, you know, multiple years where Gaza has been under attack by Israeli military, people have always talked about it being complex and complicated, but now you can't use that excuse anymore. It's no longer an excuse because it's very clear, it's crystal clear who the oppressor is and who the oppressed are. And I think when we're talking about, you know, the quote-unquote terrorist attacks that happen, I think we cannot talk about them without context and without history, that this is a response to 75 years of occupation, to 17 plus years of siege on Gaza, where people are not even able to leave or enter Gaza. Their water is regulated by the Israel Israeli occupation, their, their food, every single thing that they do on their daily life is, is being, you know, is being targeted, is being, uh, you know, decided on, on their behalf by the Israeli military occupation. So everybody's going to shed light on what happened by Hamas, but I think you cannot do that without actually contextualizing everything that has happened over the last decades. And you cannot say that it was a sudden response that, or a sudden attack that happened on October 7th, because that wasn't where it started. And I think people always go to that as a starting point. And I think for people to understand that this is a simple issue is to go back and, figure, and understand that context that we are situating ourselves in and the fact that, you know, legally, under international laws, people who are occupied by illegal militaries, by illegal governments, which Israel has been deemed as one, they have the legal right to speak up about it. And not only speaking up about it, but they have the legal right to defend themselves because Palestinians in Gaza and the West Bank have tried all kinds of tactics, whether it's BDS, the, the boycott divestment sanctions movement, whether it's um, peaceful protesting, and it's gotten to the point where people can no longer take it and we're seeing it unfold in real time. And so now, more than any other time in the history of, of Gaza and the history of Palestine, it is imperative that every single one of us speak up because we are the voices of those on the ground that are no longer able to share their voices to media or the media itself, you know, intentionally silencing them. So right now is, is, an, is a critical moment for us to speak up about this and to be very vocal and to be outspoken because you cannot be shy about oppression. You cannot be shy about genocide.